If you are a competitive FPS player in 2026, there has never been a better time for you to start AIM training. With the growth of AIM groups like Voltaic and now Raw Input, featuring profoundly skillful players that constantly produce new content and new resources surrounding AIM training, there is a wealth of information that will inform you on your journey to becoming the best aimer that you can possibly be. And with Aim Labs Esports now just around the corner, and professional players across all the different kinds of FPS games getting better and better at their mechanics, there is a lot to gain from starting aim training today. And if you're watching this video and you're thinking that you're starting far too late, oh, I'm X years old, there's no way I'll be able to catch up to the younger generation of players who have been grinding this for almost decades, don't fret. There is literally a 53-year-old aimer who has reached a very impressive level of skill in the Aim Labs official benchmarks. If you have a working hand and you are truly dedicated to getting better aim, there is no such thing as being too late. In this video, I'm going to walk you through how to get started with aim training step by step. This is the first of a three episode mini-series where I will start out by guiding you through the initial steps such as which aim trainer you should use, setting up the aim trainer, and picking the right scenarios to get moving. Then, I will provide an updated version of my top 5 aim training tips video, which is a super old video that I released all the way back in 2021 that got really popular. Those tips are kind of outdated or not really as informative today, so that will be part of this series. And finally, I will be going over the common reasons why people claim aim training doesn't work and explaining why these reasons are mostly bogus or simply narrow-sighted. I will start off with this video, and then the others will be coming in the near future. There are three primary aim trainers available on Steam. They are Kovacs FPS Aim Trainer, Aim Labs, and Aim Beast. If you are just starting out, which one should you get and why? I think if you are super fresh to aim training, like in the sense that you are new to mouse and keyboard gaming, I'd argue that it's not a bad idea to start with Aim Labs. It's not as difficult to discover great scenarios as it used to be in Aim Labs, and the mainstream aim group Voltaic has been partnered with Aim Labs for a long time so a ton of their most current resources and routines are available there. And it's also completely free. However, in my most honest opinion, you absolutely cannot go wrong starting out with Kovacs FPS Aim Trainer. For just the extremely cheap price of 10 USD on Steam, you can get access to the most diverse selection of scenarios and playlists available, as well as the extremely clean UI and navigation. But most importantly, the scenarios you will be playing will be more robust in the sense that they have parabolic motion. Not to get into the math, but as you level up in skill moving through aim labs, you might notice that sometimes the target's movements become overly linear or feel directly programmed into the scenario. In Kovac scenarios, movement is more spontaneous and feels more realistic to the real FPS game. And then we have Aim Beast, which is the least popular of the three and also has the lowest scenario variety. Aim Beast is also a paid aim trainer with the price of only $8 on Steam, so cheaper than Coax but with a bit less that you get access to. However, Aim Beast does have, in my opinion, the best performance out of the three and some of the most challenging scenarios available in any aim trainer. In this video, I will be providing you with a comprehensive starter routine. I will only be building this routine in Aim Labs and Kovacs. I do not have the most experience with scenarios in AimBeast, and I don't think it's the best option for you to go with if you are first starting out. However, if you do find that you are enjoying aim training and want to explore further resources or challenge yourself more, I highly encourage you to purchase AimBeast and try it out for yourself after getting a little bit more experience. Now, let's get into a brief setup guide. Alright, we're first going to start off with an aim lab setup guide. And this isn't going to be a really in-depth walkthrough of every single setting. This is just going to be an overview of all of the default settings that I think everyone should be using if they play Aim Labs or Aim Trainer. And so we're going to start off with the Sensitivity tab. For a game profile, we're going to go with Overwatch 2. That's because a lot of the settings that we'll be using, such as Field of View, 103 FOV is the standard FOV that pretty much every scenario is designed around these days, so you'll want to stick with that. You can go higher FOV than that, but I don't recommend that you go lower unless for certain situations or specific kinds of practice. And then everything else you can kind of just copy here. Sensitivity options you would want to have at advanced, and the reason for that is so that when you go to your mouse tab underneath sensitivity, you can set your 360 distance. And I'm pretty sure that that is how it works 
you'll need to have advanced clicked so that you can set your sensitivity in CM per 360. CM per 360 is the universal measurement for sensitivity in aim trainers or in basically all FPS games and all, all things aiming these days. So if you don't know your sensitivity and you're probably using something like uh, an outdated eDPI measure, uh, you'll have to go to mouse-sensitivity.com to convert your sensitivity over to CM per 360 over there and bring it over into aim labs. This is just the easiest way to do it. You can select a specific game profile sensitivity, but I don't recommend you do that. Just adopt the universal CM per 360 setting. And then everything else here, we could kind of just copy. And for a controller, no. We don't want you to be the controller. Anyways, for the crosser, you could pretty much use any crosser that you would want. Uh, you can import your crosser into the game. Don't bother using the crosser builder. In the description, I have provided just three crossers that you will want to use. You can go off and find more if you want, but I genuinely believe that you just need these three. One is Zeke plus one, which is the default crosser that literally every aimer likes to use, and it looks like this. And this is usually for clicking and target switching. And another one, which we already saw here, is Snowy Sharp Dot. And this is a smaller plus light crosser that is better used for tracking scenarios. And then another one, I think, is Snowy Soft Cross, which is if you prefer to not have outlines. And this one's mostly good for clicking scenarios. Moving on, we have the Targets tab. You could pretty much set these to whatever you want. This will be mostly affected to uh, the theme that you're using. For audio, I like to only have hit sounds and kill sounds on. And sometimes I, I like to use the pace base hit sound. Basically what this means is as you continue to get hits on a target or kill targets, the pitch of the hit sound will continue to increase. And I don't really like to run spawn sounds in aim labs. For graphics, I think you guys should just copy pretty much everything here. I'm in full screen windowed right now just for the sake of helping me record better, but you should be running full screen exclusive on this. If you have stutters, then you should be running full screen windowed because some scenarios can stutter if they're not, uh, if they're in full screen. Everything else should line up and all of these graphic settings, you want it all on the fastest. Turn off every single one of these things. You don't want to have visual clutter or any sort of effects that are happening in your game, especially in a name trainer where all of that is supposed to be out. In the visuals tab, there is not much that you need to worry about here. Normally this would be a very weird explanation trying to get the lighting correct, but they've since updated the UI quite a bit. And all you need to do is load one of the themes included in the description of this video using the load theme option in this tab and everything else here should be automatically covered by that. In the game, you can pretty much copy everything here again. Make sure that you turn off your weapon. I know some people want to make the argument that if they're new and they're trying to have the greatest translation into the game, they should have the weapon model, but I don't think it does anything for you except obscure your vision. And everything else uh, should be the same. So this has just been simple setup guide for aim labs, and now we're going to move on to Kovacs. For setting up Kovacs, I highly recommend that you go to my most recent setup guide for Kovacs FPS aim trainer. That one is linked in the description. I will not be going setting by setting for Kovacs in this video. I will, however, head over to the visuals tab. Also included in the description is genuinely the only two themes that you're going to need to start off with Kovacs. Clover Static for stationary target scenarios, and Clover Alternate, the best theme ever made for literally anything else. For hit sounds in both aim trainers, I have included three sound files. When you import them, what you want to do is set the sounds according to how they're named. So for example, you will use the sound named hitsound.ogg as the sound your game will play when you hit the target. This is what these sounds will sound like when all used together. And any other sound, like miss sounds or shoot sounds, should be turned off as shown previously. 
Also, make absolutely sure you turn off all gun displays, bullet holes, or any random cosmetic feedback that might be on by default that I might have missed to ensure that you will get the most clutter-free experience possible. I strongly believe that aim trainers should just install with all of that garbage off, but it's what we've got to deal with for now. Now for the routine and what you should be expecting to play. I will be making one for both Aim Labs and Kovacs, but we will be using Kovacs to showcase it. Don't worry, they will be training the exact same thing across the trainers. Each routine contains 15 scenarios, split into three categories. So that means 5 clicking scenarios, 5 tracking scenarios, and 5 switching scenarios. And importantly, the order in which each of the 5 scenarios are organized matters. This is the order in which you should be prioritizing them. Not just the play order, you must master clicking scenario 1, then clicking scenario 2, and so on. This is because the scenarios build on each other. Now, you don't need to master clicking before tracking or tracking before switching, but you should go in order for the individual category, and here's why. The playlist begins with two basic static clicking scenarios. In these scenarios, the intention is to force you to learn the Bardas method, which is the fundamental click timing approach that is used in basically any flicking-oriented clicking scenario, consisting of an initial flick and a micro-correction. I have a couple of videos explaining the Bardas method in the description, but there will be more on this in the next episode. The reason that you want to go in order here is because you can see how, as the subroutine progresses, the difficulty is not necessarily increasing, but you are easing yourself in to more diverse movement scenarios. For example, the next scenario is a basic horizontal tile frenzy scenario that asks you to use the flicking technique you developed from the static scenarios. Yes, I know, Tile Frenzy, but trust me, when you play it, it's a lot harder to just spam click your way to a good run. The tracking section does the same thing, starting you off with the most easy control tracking scenarios. Some of you might be thinking, Maddie, this is too easy. I'm hitting almost 60% and I just started aim training. That's expected, because the goal here is to force you to iron out those very tiny errors that are keeping you from hitting, say, 70% or 80%. You have to come to a fine balance in tension management and develop proactive reading of target strafes. We then test you on this with a smoothness scenario, followed by more diverse reactive variants. Then you get to the switching section, where in the exact same way, we start off easy with stationary targets in .ts, then we introduce x-axis movement, then full aerial movement, and finally increasing the TTK to switch the category to evasive. Here, you want to be thinking about the flick-to-track transition and practicing using your peripheral vision to make proper target prio decisions. And we are out of time for this first video. Catch us back here sometime in the next couple weeks for an updated aim training tips video and my personal response to how to fix your aim training approach if you feel that aim trainers aren't working for you. Until then, I hope you guys enjoy the routine. Check out my streams at twitch.tv slash maddie underscore w, where I will be guiding a new generation of aim training players for 2026 and beyond. As always, happy dock clicking.